Welcome to the first episode of our holiday series. As you know, our season two ended a couple of weeks ago, and because we find ourselves in December, we wanted to do holiday episodes. And we know that this is a little departure of the traditional Insomnia Project podcast because it's a little bit peppier. But we hope you will enjoy the holidays with us, and we're going to accompany you until the new year with some holiday episodes. So thank you for listening to the Insomnia Project. We hope you will listen and enjoy and possibly sleep. I have the privilege of having a good friend. You may remember him, Daniel Krolik, back in the studio with us today. Hi, Marco. I should mention that you're a fellow podcaster. I'm making a point of saying that because I'm not sure if I said it on your episode, but you do a podcast called Bad Gay Movies. Bad Gay Movies, Bitchy Gay Men. Oh, love it. And it's a great podcast and it's for everyone because I enjoy it as much as the next person. And what is it about that podcast that makes you happy as a pod, as a Canadian podcaster, if you will? Oh man, I love uh, I love getting into the nitty gritty of a piece of art, whether it's a movie or a book uh, or a podcast or a TV show. I love uh, I love just breaking something down and exploring all the different pieces, like a frog in biology class, just opening it up and figuring out why it's a mess, why it's great, even even stuff that we don't cover on the podcast particularly, just just figuring out how pieces of art are put together. That really, really gets me going. So definitely check out Bad Game Movies. You might remember that we talked a little bit about it with Bill um, this past For sure. This past season. Now, Daniel, it's the holidays. Yeah. Tell me about what you love about the holidays and your holiday. Well, I have a strange relationship with the holidays because I'm Jewish okay. and I celebrate Hanukkah. Uh, so there was always, growing up, there was always a little bit of a sense of otherness. Okay. Going to a shopping mall in December sure. and hearing the music. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was definitely something I really wasn't uh, exposed to that heavily. Okay. Um, but also, and, and this comes up all the time this time of year, there's no... There's no real corresponding Hanukkah TV special. Okay. There's no, I mean, there are plenty of Hanukkah songs, but there's no real Hanukkah moments in the popular culture. Okay. You know, there's like... And we're three days into Hanukkah right now. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, December 5th is the fourth night. Okay. So we're we're almost halfway there, everybody. All right, all right. Um, but it's, it's funny because... Mm-hmm. Uh, my family would always be uh, – we would go to Florida as – when I was a kid, when okay. I was a teenager, we would drive to Florida um, from Montreal. We would all – For the holidays. In the minivan and we would drive to Florida. It would take us two and a half days. <laughs> um, so very often – on Christmas itself, we were somewhere very remote. Okay. So we would find ourselves like spending Christmas at a Howard Johnson sure. on the I, I don't know, whatever it was, the I-90 90, or the, sure. I in, the, or in, in the middle of Southern California. And I would, I would get, I, and it was, I would get a sense as a young teenager or somebody mm-hmm. I was probably like, I don't know, 12 or 13 years old, I would get a sense, oh my God, this is really cool. And also, oh my God, this is really sad. Okay. You know, and I, you know, even though I came from a family who didn't celebrate Christmas because mm-hmm. we, you know, we're Jewish, mm-hmm. uh, I would, I would get this sort of residual guilt okay. about spending Christmas in the middle of a Howard Johnson right. on, you know, uh, off of off of the highway. Sure. Um, but if we weren't in, if we weren't traveling, if we weren't in Florida, we would go to the movies. And okay. We would, we would have Chinese food in a movie. And it's funny, like, I think the general public has co-opted Chinese food in a movie on Christmas right. uh, over the past however many years, mm-hmm. five or ten years or something. Because if you go see a movie now, in 2018, on December the 24th, it's packed. Sure. Everybody, yes. everybody is there in a way that they weren't you know, when you were growing when up, when I was growing up, sure. exactly, it was something that the Jews did, and pretty much nobody else. So I don't like. I'm funny. Like I think about this, and I don't know what the trajectory the trajectory is mm-hmm. about how it became this thing that 
everybody does. I don't, and I don't know if it's reflective of more immigrants、mm-hmm. coming to North America who don't celebrate Christmas、sure. and settle down. But I don't think it's just that. Okay. I don't think it's just.、That. I know that we go to the movies now too on, on the twenty fourth or the twenty fifth. It depends. Okay. So you know, once you're done eating and celebrating with the family, which goes on for hours. <laughs> yeah. As a let's say twenty year old, thirty year old, forty year old, after you're done that, if it's not at your house and you've got to clean, you kind of have the night to yourself. So oftentimes there's always a interesting or fun film、mm-hmm. that plays around the holidays. So I've done it many times where it's like let's go and what we'll do is sometimes meet other friends who finish celebrating Christmas or Christmas Eve at their family's house and we'll meet at the movies and celebrate it with friends. But was this something I did growing up? Absolutely no, not. No. 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 No, but that's why I said it wasn't until my late twenties or thirties where where we started to do that.、Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. Let me ask you this: Tell me about some of your fond Hanukkah memories. You celebrating Hanukkah, or if there's some memories that you have well, that are that have Hanukkah's, stayed. Hanukkah is a funny little holiday、okay. because, from a religious standpoint, it is not significant. Okay,、uh, the events that transpire to make Hanukkah happen are not. Biblical events—they、okay. happened after. I'm deferring completely to you. For、so、sure, if anyone has issues, they can send their emails <laughs> yeah, to you. Yeah, please,、okay. please at me by all means. Right.、Uh, the the events from Hanukkah—it's it's a very gripping story. It's、sure. a great story,、um, but it's not a biblical story.、Right. So there's no there's no religious component to、mm-hmm. Hanukkah.、Um, There's there you don't you don't you don't go to synagogue in the、mm-hmm. same way that people will go to midnight mass. Right.、Um, there's there's nothing religious. There's no dinner like there is a Passover、right. dinner where there are songs and prayers and rituals. There's nothing like that.、Um, it's just, yeah. I I mean I don't I don't. Know the sure. I don't know how it got built up, but it but it did. But now in the twentieth century, in the twentieth and twenty first centuries,、um, it's. Being built up as this competitor to Christmas,、sure. so Jewish families can have something to observe during the holiday season.、Okay. But it's funny, it, just because from a religious standpoint, it's not an important or significant holiday. I myself, and also Hanukkah,、um, Hanukkah gets observed according to the Hebrew calendar. Right. So it's at a different place in the Gregorian calendar every、okay. year. So some years it's the end of November. Right. Some years it goes right into Christmas and New、right. Year's. And the last couple of days could even be in January,、mm-hmm. um, or some days like it is in 2018. It's the first week of December. Sure.、Um, Sorry. So, so some years my fa- I live in Toronto. My family's in Montreal. So some years I I'm able to spend a night or two fun ago with my family,、right. and some years in its entirety I'm here. Right. And it is honestly either way, it is not a big. Deal. Okay.、Um, Passover is the holiday. Sure, of course. Passover and Rosh Hashanah are the big holidays that I feel obligated to be with my family. Okay. That I feel obligated to be home. But Hanukkah. No. Can I just send a shout out to your lovely mother? Because、oh、every time、God. I see your mom, <laughs> she、I、loves just, you. She's so、she、wonderful. She loves you, Marco. Now I will say this, Daniel. Yeah.、Um, not to debate you, because this is about having fun and holidays, right? But there are some holidays that are celebrated that aren't significant Christian holidays, and now have been holidays for everyone. So, for example, Valentine's Day, originally called Saint Valentine's、mm-hmm. Day or Saint Patrick's Day. They're not religious holidays per se. They represent a saint, but they're not that Saint Valentine's did did anything more important than Saint Lawrence or. And I'm no Christian scholar.、Um, now, having said that, I celebrate Valentine's Day and Saint Patrick's Day with the best of them, right?、Um, and I have some great memories associated with those. "Quote unquote holidays." Not that they're days that you take off from school or work or whatnot, but it's an excuse for a party, yeah, a a party and stuff. Yeah. So I would imagine that Hanukkah. Maybe it, it clearly it's not the most significant、uh, Jewish holiday or Jewish uh, religious. Uh, but Hanukkah parties are great. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. It's almost、uh, from the you know from the social standpoint,、sure. it's almost an excuse to have a really fun party. Yeah.、Um, The miracle of Hanukkah、okay. is that、uh, after、uh, after the second temple, I hope I get this right.、Okay. After the second temple was destroyed,、um, 
they found a menorah and they thought they only had enough oil in it to last one day. Right. And the oil lasted eight whole days, which is why you observe Hanukkah for eight days. And which is why, uh, from a food perspective, everything is fried in layers and layers oh. of delicious, delicious oil. Um, so in addition, I think everybody is familiar with latkes. Love them. Yeah, for sure. But I think latkes at this stage are a very common, very right. secular thing. Um, but also there's uh, the Israeli donut called a souvganiya, which is a deep fried donut in oil that is um, often stuffed with jelly and then covered in powdered sugar. And I want to mention that you talked about this on my other podcast. Did every, I? Pl- every place is the oh, same. Oh, I sure re- did. Remember? So, and we compared it to the Persian. That's right. That's oh, my right. goodness. Of course. Uh, yeah. And the Persian is the name of a donut type dessert that's yeah. found in, in Northern Ontario. You can listen to that episode if you want more information. I on totally that. forgot about that. Daniel, I love latkes. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Applesauce or sour cream? What's your? What about sugar? Oh, now you're throwing me for a look. The other thing about latkes is I grew up in a household. There are certain latke recipes Mm -hmm. that will call for baking powder. Okay. Which I like to forego. Okay. um, Because I am personally of the school that the flatter the latke is, the better. Okay. And baking powder makes it puff up and makes it thicken. Okay. Um, So I like a very, very flat latke. Wow. That, Personally, that's, that's the... um, I don't think you need to choose between sour cream or applesauce. Okay, uh, I would also put sugar on it as well, regardless of whether you're having the sour cream or the. the... Sometimes, sometimes it's just nice with neither of those and just a just little bit, of, sh- a little bit of sugar on top. Oh wow! Yeah, Daniel, you're blowing my mind. I know, now. right? So okay, the food, the food around that um, around Hanukkah is a great memory. Any mm-hmm. other great memories that you had around that time? Uh, dreidel is dreidel is great oh, for kids, right. yeah, and, a, and a game of dreidel can go on forever, Amazing. forever. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's def it's definitely a holiday that is geared towards kids, um, because very often you do get presents for eight days in a row. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So so you you come home every night and and you're you're excited and you're anticipating what uh, what present you're going to open up. You can get eight little presents. Um, yeah, we had uh, my family growing up. My family threw a couple of really fun Hanukkah parties. Um, I've made I've made as a, as a grown up and I my you know the way my life has turned out. Most of my friends are not Jewish. Okay. Um, I've 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 shown up at uh, any number of Christmas parties with a plate of uh, with a plate of latkes that oh. get devoured in seconds. Um, so uh, so yeah, but it's but it's funny because when I think about the holiday time with my family, um, I do have fun Hanukkah memories. Okay. But my biggest memories are of eating in remote places in the middle of Southern America uh, on the on December twenty fourth and twenty fifth, so and feeling very weird and very out of sorts. Mm-hmm. Well, it's interesting because the holidays for me start in December and they mm-hmm. encompass a lot of different as they do for most people, right? And so you sort of get into the spirit of the holidays, and for me. I've always loved that Hanukkah is often towards the end of November or in December. Sometimes it'll follow my birthday, yeah. which is in the middle of December. Yeah. And I always love that there's more than one thing to celebrate, regardless of the fact that I'm not Jewish. I have a menorah. You've mm-hmm. seen it. I sure have. And for me, it's part of the holiday season. And I love having it. I don't know if it'll offend people that I have a menorah and I'm not Jewish. Why would it offend people? I don't know. But I just want to make sure anyone who's listening. But it's also funny because in the States. Because I know if you had a Christmas tree, I would be like, that's. But it's funny you should bring that up, Marco, okay. because uh, in the States, it is much more common for Jews to have Christmas trees without mm-hmm. observing Christmas whatsoever. Right. So especially in especially down south, there are plenty of Jews who will just... Wow. And maybe it's because Christmas is a less secular thing in the right. States. Um but there are plenty of Jews in uh, in the states who will just throw up a Christmas tree without, and there's no religious significance right. attached. to it's it. It's just a fun thing yeah. to have. Yeah, whether or not that's you... not something that Jews do in Canada. Okay, I think Jews are very cognizant okay. of having a Christmas tree. Sure, and I think uh, you know that that really doesn't happen. But mm. in the states, um, Jewish families will have Christmas trees because just because it's the holiday season. Once again. Mm. If you're a Jewish family who's listening in the U.S. and you have a problem with that, direct your emails Come at me. To, to Daniel. Come at now, me. we're here in celebration of the holidays. Let me ask you, what do you like to drink around the holidays? Do you have, like, 
like an eggnog drink that you like, or is there like a uh, well, hot Jews, cocoa? J- traditionally, and I'm not, ta- I'm not yeah. talking about like Hanukkah, just like around this holiday I season. I don't. Every holiday season, I try to like eggnog, and, it's not and I thing. don't succeed. Okay. okay. And I mean, I like you know, I like a little bit of rum, but sure. maybe it's the creaminess, okay, or the or the fattiness of the drink. And I, I mean. You you know how I feel about dairy, Marco. Yes. You know how I feel about dairy. God is in the dairy. <laughs> in, in fact, it is. Um, but eggnog is something that I force myself to like but every, it's not your every holiday. No. What about pumpkin spice drinks or what about I'm like... I'm good a, with pumpkin anything. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's more of a November, October kind of f- flavor, but it, it it carries through to the Absolutely. December holidays. Yeah. N- uh, anything spiced? Like I like, oh, I love a good hot toddy. Okay, I there you go. I love so, a hot toddy. So what about like a buttered rum with hot butter rum mm-hmm. as a hot toddy? Cause you my, said, my preference in a hot okay. toddy is honey over butter. Okay. What so about honey and do, butter? No, too much? Maybe, maybe, maybe it's the creaminess of the drink. That, okay. And again, like I don't. I don't like drinking milk. I don't understand why anybody would ever want to drink just a glass of milk. I love it. With like, I don't, I don't it's understand. Not your and, thing. and I'm somebody who eats, and you know this about me too. I'm somebody who eats everything. Yes. I have no limits when it comes to nope, food. No, not at all. Um, but like, I drinking mm-hmm. dairy is not something that is appealing to me. So when I make a hot toddy, uh, it's just uh, hot water, scotch, and uh, a lot of honey. Yeah, and lemon. Sounds delightful. Yeah, it's good. Sounds it's delightful. good, but I don't know. Just like dr- I don't, I don't like to drink my dairy. Mm-hmm. Now, do I, you do you like the holiday season in December? Like, do you like that it's cold and we wear mittens and gloves and people skate? Uh, yeah, yeah. I go back and forth in it because okay. I put in my retail time as well. Oh, sure. I've spent any number of holiday seasons pounding the retail pavement. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have, you know, I have on on that front at least. I have a lot of mixed feelings about the holiday season and the holiday onslaught. Um, but because uh, my family, my family doesn't really do Christmas gifts or Hanukkah sure. gifts. There was a point when we would do a Secret Santa. Oh, yeah. So for so, so for tell a few me about years, that. Like, yeah. how, how would that work? Because um, everybody does a Secret Santa differently. Yeah. So we would do it. Uh, it would be. There'd be maybe eight or nine of us involved. Okay. Um, so there would be a Friday night dinner that I usually wasn't around for because it would take place in Montreal. Okay. That everybody would draw somebody's name. Okay. Um, and then we would, and then once I would get back for the holidays, usually at the end of December sometime, we would do uh, we would do a Secret Santa. Based on who's you've picked? Based on who we drew. Okay. Yeah. And there's no stealing. You know how if I give you a gift mm-hmm. and you open it up, someone else... Oh, I guess then well, in this you, in this yeah, case, then, you okay. know who you're buying for, right? Okay. So you're trying to buy for, for somebody specifically. One year, my father got my brother a label maker okay. for some undiscernible reason, and I get and um, uh, it was a oddly chosen gift, which mm-hmm. my father to this day has not heard the end of. Oh, that's hilarious! Yeah, and what did you? And get at the that time, you? at the time, my brother might have been. 13 or 14. Right. So, I mean, I don't know what what 14-year-old boy doesn't want a label maker. Sure. Did that affect the career path he chose? Oh, is, is that's, a, good, la- that's is, a very good question, Marco. I don't know. You'd have to have him on. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Like, would he use a label maker today in his in his daily life or his work? I mean, do you have moments in your in your day-to-day life now that you're like, if only I had a label maker? Oh, I have a label maker. <laughs> of course I'm you do. About it. Yeah. I'm sorry for even doubting no, that, no. You, <laughs> that you have one. So let's round up December. Now we're okay. getting to the end of December. How do you celebrate the new year? And um, I know that being Jewish, you celebrate the new year at a different time as yeah, well. Yeah, which is nice. And I think the fall is a lovely time to celebrate the new year. Sure. Because there's this really collective sense of the seasons turning over mm-hmm. and a new page starting. You're back in school. The weather is changing. So like, This I, is the Jewish new year yeah, we're talking about in case people in are like, Rosh Hashanah. Well, right. So I love the fact that the Jewish new year is, is, is at the beginning of the fall mm-hmm. because when your new year is December 31st, right. you wake up the next day. And it's still really cold and right. gross and snowy right. outside, and you don't want to do anything, and it gets dark at five. Mm-hmm. So, uh, from a personal standpoint, even I love the fact that the Jews celebrate the New Year in September. Mm-hmm. I think it's beautiful. But do you also celebrate on the thirty-first? Yeah. Um, so you celebrate, in essence, you celebrate two New Years. 
Sure. That's pretty cool. I do. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And I mean, my New Year's as an adult, my New Year's have absolutely run the gamut mm-hmm. of, you know, of sometimes being with my, uh, sometimes being with my family and going mm-hmm. to sleep at 1230, sometimes staying out and drinking all night at a bar and stumbling home at 330. Sure. Uh, sometimes playing charades at a friend. And, and so I've, I've, I've sort of run the gamut and uh, whatever I did the past New Year's, I sort of like to do something different. Okay. Yeah, I sort of like to do whatever I didn't do the past New Year's. Uh, what's one of your fondest New Year's memories? Uh, I, I think it was um, showing up last minute to a friend's place for a New Year's party maybe seven or eight years ago. Um, and we played charades, but we played it with um, what we wanted to happen to us in the coming year. Oh. So we put. So we wrote, we wrote it down, and they were, you know, they were very simple life basic general life career fall in love career success sure. goals and we wrote it down but then we had to then we had to act them out oh wow yeah so that was um that was a really fun way to ring in the year oh my goodness yeah that sounds great daniel i want to thank you so much for coming onto the holiday episode it was very important for me to have not only yourself here, but have representation of people who celebrate Hanukkah. Representation matters. Yeah, it does. And um, I want to wish you a happy Hanukkah. Oh, thank you. Chag Sameach, as oh, we say. Oh, that's so wonderful. What does that translate to? Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah, it's, it's a, wonderful. It's a blanket blanket statement. And Chag, is there a response I should be saying to that? You can say Toda. Thank you. Toda, toda Rabba. That's thank so, you very much. That's so great. And, um, of course, our listeners can listen to you on Bad Gay Movies. You have a lot of things going on. I wish you much success, much joy, and much happiness for the new year. Do you drink champagne? Do you like champagne? What don't I drink? No, I know. But do you – because you said you don't like eggnog, so – No, I do like champagne. It's okay. just I, – I think it's just the sensation of drinking your dairy. That yeah, okay, not that's not – okay. Cham- I'm all for champagne. But do you prefer champagne or a Prosecco or sparkling wine? I prefer the way you say Prosecco. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I do like Prosecco. Prosecco is never something that I think of unless I'm faced with it. Okay. <laughs> um, but it's never something I seek out. But every time I have Prosecco, I'm very happy that I'm drinking it. But I never sit at home and I'm like, you know what I, mm-hmm. you know what I could do with right now? A nice, a nice sparkling glass of Prosecco. Um, oh, but I like the bubbly. Is it important to you to have it for New Year's? I've had plenty of New Year's without it. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so no. So it's one, but I think it's one of those things where I don't think about getting it, but every time I get it, I'm very happy that I have it. Yeah, I, for me, I'm not a fan. I'm not. I'm not. I, sparkling wines don't do it for me. Mm-hmm. I'll have it. It's fine. There's one that I really like. It's difficult to find in Canada. You can find it in the U.S. Okay. It's called Brachetto. It's kind of a rosé sparkling wine, and it tastes. It has flavors of strawberries without being syrupy sweet. It's really lovely. When I was here last year for Vito, mm-hmm. for a Vito night, you made me tremendous drinks. Oh, yes. You we made did a whole bunch of terrific drinks. Yeah. 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 That's for our listeners. That's a totally different thing I do. It's a character. And I had a night of, anyways, long story. I was making all kinds of, I oh love, my goodness. I love making cocktails, like a candy cane cocktail. Oh, it's an art. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's so much fun. And it's fun to celebrate whether or not you drink. But celebrating with beverages and your friends and playing games, for me, that's the perfect New Year's. I'm what not, more do you need? Like playing charades with someone who knows so much about movies like yourself uh-huh. and actors, too. Like, have you ever played that game? We call it the cottage game. Celebrity Celebrities is what the world okay. calls it. Okay. And you write down a bunch of different um, actors or, perform- or fictional characters or whatnot. And we play with some friends. Dale. Boye, who has been on the show. And there's certain actors we'll always put in there because she can never remember them. Like who? Like Aaron, um, Aaron Gray. Who's She's Aaron from, Gray? She was from um, Buck Rogers, and she played the mom in Silver Spoons. And she, That is a deep dive. Yeah. And oh, so my. We, but everyone God. else would know who she is, and, and Dale always gets I her. don't know who Aaron well, Gray then, is. Wow. Tom Wolpat is another one we put in there. You don't need to tell me about Tom Wolpat, okay. Marco. Oof. You know Tom Wopat? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and really, Tom Wopat at any age. Really? Any age. So is it fair to say you wouldn't mind celebrating the holidays or the New Year's with Tom Wopat? Even, I mean, he must be 70 right now, right. if a day, but Tom Wopat, any decade, any age. 
I'm there. Okay. So <laughs> pop open that Prosecco. So you know who Tom, Wol- Tom Wolpat is. I sure do. Is. I sure do. Dale never gets Tom Wolpat. He's another one, and I'm trying to. He was also the second husband on Sybil. Do you remember the sitcom Sybil with Sybil Shepherd and Christine Baranski as the alcoholic? Oh, I love Christine Baranski. He was uh, he was one of the ex husbands on Sybil. And Christine Baranski was awesome in a great holiday film, which is The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, playing the love interest to The Grinch, played by. Jim Carrey. I thought Christine Baranski was she the was, love interest. She was the one oh, that he yeah. sort of falls for, and she's well. Christine Baranski is also in one of my uh, favorite holiday movies, which I can't really talk about. But it's called. Okay. The, it's called. Well, I can talk about it, but you know, it's not a. It's not a rewatchable because okay. it starts Kevin Spacey. Okay, fair enough. So, um, but it's called The Ref. Oh yes, The Ref. Yeah. Where uh, Dennis Leary plays a uh, a burglar. Yes, who yes. stumbles upon a dysfunctional mm-hmm. Thanksgiving dinner, mm-hmm. and it's Judy Davis and Kevin Spacey. Right. And let me ask you this. Do you enjoy holiday movies? Uh, within reason. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's there's a couple of things I like to go back to. And again, one of the frustrating things growing up, even sure. now, is that there's not a ton of Hanukkah representation. Fair. There are, I mean, Jews built Hollywood. Right. We wrote Hollywood, but sure. there's still not a ton of... On, like in Seinfeld, they never talked. They never talked about Hanukkah right. or, or synagogue or anything. So there's still not a ton of good representation. Is there any Hanukkah film that? that there's Hanukkah TV. There's okay. Hanukkah specials, but right. I would be hard pressed to name a movie that revolved around Hanukkah. Okay. Um, what what Christmas movies do I love? I mean, you know, like I like a Christmas story. Right. I Scrooged with Bill Murray. Yes, it's I think it's a terrific yeah. with, with Carol Kane. God bless as the yeah. fairy. So Scrooged is a is a holiday movie that I I remember seeing with my dad in Florida. So I have very fond memories of that. Um, but not 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 a not a ton. Uh, sure. Hanuk- uh, Chris- uh, holiday movies, I guess, aren't really your your thing. Oh. Um, Home for the Holidays, though, which is a Thanksgiving movie. Well, that's fine. It's a um, holiday film. Yeah, with yeah. Uh, Jodie Foster directed it with Holly Hunter, um, Robert Downey Jr. Okay, and it's Bancroft about... was the mother. I love Anne Bancroft. Yeah, that's a real. That's one I haven't thought about in years. Okay. Home for the Holidays is a really terrific Thanksgiving. I'll be at Thanksgiving. It's a really terrific. Um, and there's there's a wonderful French movie. Uh, I think it's called A Christmas Tale. Oh, which I love with where Catherine Deneuve is the mother, the matriarch of the family, which I really love. Oh, wow. That's yeah. cool. I know that we watch um, Love Actually. Oh, Amanda God. hates it. I hate it so much. I know. She I hates hate it. it. And she loves that I love it. And so because we watch because it plays every year on the holidays, yeah. right? That she loves to drive me crazy when I watch it. So I've grown to hate it and she's grown to love it. Oh, God. So that's our little... Oh, it's little... so. I mean, you know, yeah. I think I think we can all watch Emma Thompson crying to River, mm-hmm. and nothing else. She's great. She's she, phenomenal. She, well, there are so many great. I mean, it's Alan Rickman. I love Nine, Alan Rickman. Yeah. Laura Linney. Yeah. So it's any number of great actors. It's just but, not for you. Oh, Marco, I think it's garbage. There's a great. I think it's garbage. There's a great movie of the week. Dolly Parton Christmas about her life. Marco. How do you feel about the Dolly Parton Netflix movies coming out? I didn't even know about it. Is Each it... one is based on a different song. Okay. I think we got to end it there. Okay. Okay. I don't think our, our, my listeners know I'm a huge Dolly Parton fan, so we'll end it there. Daniel, I, I tried to end it before, but we started talking about movies, and we could I just could go this. on. I could talk to you all night long. Oh, well, thank you. Well, listen, I do hope we spend some holiday nights together, having fun, drinking some lovely beverage, playing some sort of charades. Would, nothing would please me more. And I wish you all the best for the new year. Daniel, the best to you too. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of our holiday episodes. We hope whatever you celebrate out there, you have a festive, joyous, safe holiday. Thanks, everybody. As always, the Insomnia Project is produced by Drumcast Productions, and this particular episode was recorded in our home studios. Mm-hmm.